Warning, this video may contain spoilers for late parts in the game. If you plan on playing this at some point, turn back now. You have been warned. Hello everyone, today I might have a pretty divisive review that might make a couple people angry, so let me just state up top. These are my opinions for this game and I'm not even trying to make this game out to not be worth playing through this review. Overall, I had a fun time, but there were a lot of things that surprised and confused me throughout playing this game, and I'll be talking about all those things later on in this review, but for now, let's talk about the basics of No More Heroes. Alright, this game has heavy use of the motion controls on the Joy-Cons, which I had some problems with, but my Joy-Cons are the originals that my Switch came with. So I don't know if that was the problem, and I'm not talking about Drift, but essentially you play as Travis who wields a beam sword of sorts. You attack solely with the A button, and the B button is used to break through defenses, which after you do it, becomes the grab button. After that is where the motion stuff comes in. If you point the Joy-Con down, you'll hit lower, and be able to hit enemies who are guarding high, and vice versa. And with grabs, you'll have to move the Joy-Cons in a certain direction. Sometimes the grab directions wouldn't register correctly, as well as the final hit to an enemy, which requires you to, honestly, quite awesomely, slice the enemy. I think you can sort of influence this a little, as the best is the sideways finisher, as it can hit multiple enemies. The downward finisher does multiple as well, but I found it did it a lot less frequently. The motion controls being spotty isn't a deal breaker, but I was often frustrated that sometimes it just wouldn't do it. At first, I thought it was because I had my Switch in a kind of tucked away area, but I moved it right in front of me and I still had some problems. Another possible user end error is randomly when attacking, it would default to a charged attack, which can be done by either holding A or B. This usually happened with A, though my button wasn't getting stuck in the controller or anything, but again, not a deal breaker. The rest of the game has you traveling open world in Santa Destroy, as you gain money in order to pay to set up the next fight with an assassin of some sort and continue the story. The way you get money is through the main quest, side jobs, assassination missions, rummaging through trash, or getting the upgrade to dig with the beam sword. The best mode of transportation at the beginning is Travis Bike, the Spell Tiger. You can use Nitro with ZL, and you can either flip the right Joy-Con up to perform a jump, or use ZR. You will crash if you hit fences, buildings, or certain signs, though most other things and people you'll just fly through. After every main quest, one side job becomes available, and after completing that, it will open two assassination missions. I mistakenly started buying stuff right when the shops opened, being able to buy clothes for Travis that are purely cosmetic, training that increases strength, health, and combos, and finally weapons of which there are only four in the entire game including your base weapon. Now this is going to come up again later. Throughout Santa Destroy, I mentioned rummaging through trash. Sometimes you'll find shirts and there's a whole goddamn bunch. Any you've previously opened will graciously stay open so you don't have to keep on opening the same ones and just get money and stuff. If you look on the mini-map, you'll notice orange and pink dots after you get the upgrade I mentioned before, though these are sometimes hard to tell apart, at least for me. Pink dots are the money spots, and the orange spots are lavacock balls. The balls are kind of the collectibles of the game, with there being 49 and their use isn't readily obvious until a little later in the game, but eventually a bar will open, and when you have 7, the man inside will teach you a special technique, which I'd suggest to buy the last one to get the dash ability as soon as possible, as it makes looking for the balls a whole lot easier. Honestly, this game's story doesn't make any fucking sense at all, and I'll talk about that a bit later, but there's really only a little bit to explain, because most of what the characters say have nothing to do with the story or what happens later in the story, and seem more like self-contained instances of randomness, so here goes. The game starts with Travis explaining that he had no money left and went to a bar to drown his sorrows. He met a girl who gave him a job which he accepted without thinking twice about. That job was to kill someone named the Drifter, which he did, which just makes him a murderer. 
The girl shows up again and reveals her name as Sylvia Crystal and tells Travis that he is now the 11th ranked assassin in the world and suggests that he should kill his way to the top and Travis just says sure why not. His first kill that sends him to rank 10 is against a guy named Death Metal where they talk about paradise or something with Death Metal being happy that he's dying for some reason. Sylvia shows up and tells him to continue on his way up the ranks before someone shows up like Travis and tries to murder him, with Travis stipulating that if he makes number one, that Sylvia would have to smash. She just says, maybe. Travis is then told he needs to make enough money to set up the next match, which he does, being sent to the sports stadium to fight Dr. Peace. Learning that the money he gave was used to give Dr. Peace a family meal at an incredibly exclusive and expensive restaurant, executing him and reaching the ninth rank. He is then sent the next bill to set up the 8th fight against Shinobu in a high school who accuses Travis of killing her master and father, even though Travis had never met the guy before and had only learned his fighting style through watching videotapes. Travis lets her live, and when Sylvia asks why, he just says that she is basically not worth it as she is now, and wants to fight her when she's stronger. His seventh match takes place in a movie warehouse, encountering a mailman named John, who turns out to be the assassin Destroy Man, who uses pretty underhanded tactics against Travis, though somehow Travis doesn't die, and ends up killing him, while he tries to fire his machine gun nipples, taking the seventh spot. The sixth battle is against Holly Summers on the beach. After the battle, Travis gets the upper hand, but can't bring himself to kill her, proving that he's just a simp, with her saying that she fell in love with him for this, but she eats a grenade and kills herself, putting Travis in sixth. His fifth fight takes him down a long ass hallway, building up to a fight against Let's Shake, who powers up Dr. Let's Shake, a giant brain in a mech, that is seemingly going to make a giant blast in the area, though Travis and the player get dicked out of a fight by a mysterious man who instantly kills the two and reveals himself as Henry before Sylvia shows up and he vanishes, with Travis reaching fifth due to a technicality. The next time Travis take the subway again and play a knockoff Galaga based on the in-universe anime that Travis likes before he watches a magic performance with Sylvia by the next assassin he is supposed to kill, Harvey Moisewicz Volodarsky, where Travis reveals that his parents are dead before he cuts Harvey's eyes and, for some reason, his own assistants murder him, getting Travis to rank 4. He takes a bus to his next match, which is located in Speed City, where he sees the side character who I guess became Travis Master back at the Ryu Thunder training building, as Travis Cat John appears out of nowhere, distracting him and getting him obliterated by a beam from the next assassin, Speed Buster, who turns out to be an old lady with a giant beam cannon. Travis makes his way to her and destroys her cannon and she congratulates him, even saying that his master was a good man before she accepts her death, putting Travis in third. The next fight puts Travis back in the sports stadium where he fights an agonizing fight against Bad Girl where he almost dies before telling her that she won even though she dies, still putting Travis in second with only the final battle left. This is basically where things somehow go even further off the rails and had me confused as shit. When Travis actually does get enough money for his final match and deposits it, he gets no call from Sylvia directing him to where he needs to go. He instead calls the number on a business card she gave him and it turns out to be the number of her mother who explains that Sylvia is an expert con artist and that the Assassin's Association doesn't exist at all, with Travis getting rightfully angry because he became a murderer because of this. Then, Sylvia's mom eggs him on to see it to the end, because at this point, he might as well. Travis heads outside to see his bike getting stolen, and he makes his way to where he kind of chases them, but not really. He just knows where to go, I guess, and ends up in a forest where his ghost master gives him directions of where to go. This leads Travis on a road to a giant castle where he encounters Darkstar, who says that he's Travis' father before Darkstar gets killed by a girl who reveals herself to be Travis' stepsister, saying why he even believed him when he saw that their father was dead. 
She then explains her entire backstory in a meta fast forwarded sequence that I had to look online to even understand, which is that their father abandoned her mother, which led her mom to suicide. The dad would come back occasionally and rape her, so she had to sell her body on the street in order to pay to learn combat so she could get revenge, though I don't know why she killed his mom, besides that I guess he treated Travis a lot better. They fight and she ends up stabbing Travis in the heart, but Shinobu comes out of nowhere and cuts off Jean's hand, allowing Travis to kill her and finally reach rank 1, and I don't know how, but apparently he doesn't die and he's all good. This is the part where you need to have all the obtainable swords, because you can either view a regular ending or the real one if you get all the swords, which isn't hard by the way. While Travis is taking a dump, an assassin barges in and tries to kill him, but Henry from earlier shows up and saves him. This leads to a fight between the two, where Henry fucking reveals that he's Travis' twin goddamn brother, while also dropping the bombshell that Sylvia is actually his wife. Travis has a bombshell of his own though that he actually slept with Sylvia at some point after he had killed John. The two continue to fight before they become a painting, showing Sylvia and a young John at an art gallery, looking at it with Sylvia again showing up and saying it's over, only for there to be a to be continued showing up. No More Heroes was a pretty crazy experience being quite a wild ride all the way throughout the game. The characters are pretty funny and interestingly weird, and the gameplay is mostly just as fun and engaging. Driving around the city and finding what there is to find was cool as well, especially after I got the dash ability which made searching for stuff a whole lot easier, like I mentioned before. Most of the bosses were also really fun challenges of learning how to damage them as the fight went on even though I was playing on the easy difficulty for this review. I do, however, have some big grievances on my end that didn't make me totally dislike the game, but made me not understand the hype surrounding the series. Disclaimer, I haven't played the second game, so these gods are describing this game on its own. I didn't get the story at all if I didn't make that clear. Nothing made sense to me. I get that this is supposed to be hard satire, but most of it comes off as LOL XD randomness, which lessened whatever impact it was supposed to have for me. Especially since I always heard that this game was amazing. All the characters are extremely bipolar, which like I mentioned is funny, but for the most part, they say things that absolutely make no sense with what is going on, and some of the visuals are the same way. Like, I get that to be continued and joking about tying up loose ends, but as a game by itself, it just feels like nonsense for me. I also felt that Santa Destroy was unnecessarily large, and mostly felt empty with many of the side missions being in the same area as the main missions, and many taking place in the dumb parking garage. I know there were limitations to the Wii, but then why did they make Santa Destroy so goddamn big except to find the Lavakov balls and extra t-shirts? Hell, even two sets of boss entrances were the same. Also as most likely many others have said, fuck the bad girl fight. Some of the worst boss pacing ever, which I get might have been the point or something, but it's still agony. You have to understand, I had every intention coming into this game that I was going to love it, due to how it was often framed by many people, but the story is just not good to me. I still love the gameplay, and I'm very hopeful that I will end up liking the second game in the series, as I was told it was a lot better, just a lot more focused in general, and I'd probably have loved this game when it originally came out on the Wii, because it really fell in line with my humor back then but I probably won't be coming back to this game even if I do end up liking the second and the soon to come out third game. Hope you don't flame me too hard if maybe I just didn't understand and see you next video.